Hi, my name is Lulu, and I am into a lot of different fandoms. I like anime, I like reading sci-fi fantasy, I like all kinds of nerdy stuff, and more than that, I like to talk about it. <laughs> I also like to craft. So for the next little while, sit back, hang out, and craft along with me while I go over whatever it is that I'm currently into. Hello and welcome to today's episode. As always, I'm going to start off with talking about the yarn and the project that I'm currently working on. Uh, the project itself is a cowl, still unnamed currently, created by Laura from Inked Empress Fiber Arts, which she is an independent dye company. I will have links to her website and her own YouTube channel in the description uh, please take a chance to check her out she actually has a video up I think yesterday it came up and it is a small little look into the behind the scenes of how she gets some of her dye works and it's it's a nice video I really like the yarn that she ended up with too the pattern itself is is coming along we finally gotten through the ribbing itself it's there I I like this ribbing I like this ribbing a lot. Um, and I don't know, I haven't knitted very many cowls before, so maybe that's why I'm so excited about this one. But I am very eager to continue seeing how the project goes from here. Uh, the yarn is the Footsie Fingering Weight by Volan Vine Yarns, also a independent dyeing company who has a, a YouTube channel of her own. Uh, this is in the Stoker colorway. And also her channel will be linked in the description as well. Now, both these indie dyers have limited stock and they both sell out. So uh, check their websites relatively often, I would say, if you're interested in picking up some of their yarns because they, <laughs> they sell out pretty fast. And that's... That's... Oh, mostly everything that I have to say, really, about the knitting. Oh, there's my husband. Yep. Walked right across the camera. <laughs> he forgot I was filming. Uh, in his defense, though, he is also... Was in the middle of a dungeon raid in Final Fantasy XIV when I was like, Hey, this is the perfect time for me to start recording. So, you know, little column A, little column B. When he returns, however, he, he went around the other way. So you don't get to see his wonderfully bright and colorful uh, Islander shirt again, unfortunately. Um, but yeah. Oh, you also see me from time to time. You might see me picking up this little book that's beside my yarn bowl. And it is, it actually contains uh, the pattern that I have written down from, of course, Inked Empress Fiber Arts. Um, I'm, like I said, we're through the ribbing. I'm at the point to where I am now <laughs> checking the pattern continuously. So you might, uh, you might see me pick that book up a few times. You, I think you already have seen me pick up the book. Uh, so yeah, that is that is all I can really think of in regards to the yarn and the knitting for today. So let's um let's go on to the episode. I also wanted to add in a little bit of an update um, on the Wheel of Time. I am still in book four uh, so far. None of my questions or my assumptions have really been come to fruition. Uh, really enjoying some of the parent stuff. Um, always enjoying the Elaine and Egwene stuff, 
but still listening to that. Um, nothing really too new to report. Just wanted to give a brief update for those who may have already read the series. And it's like, hmm, <laughs> when is she going to insert thing here? So yeah, there is that. And now we're going to continue on with the episode. Today I want to talk about um, a, a pretty popular anime series. It was popular when it was a manga. It was popular the first time it became an anime. And you know what? It's popular now in the reboot. And that is Fruits Basket. Uh, affectionately known as Furuba, or as me and the friend who are viewing it together will call it Fruit Bats, for no reason. It's just fun. Fruit Bats. It's a fun phrase. So, if anyone here has not watched or read any of the now, I guess, three renditions of this series, uh, Fruits Basket is about a girl named Toru Honda, who ends up living with a an interesting cast of characters all in the Soma family who when they are hugged by a member of ooh we're going to go with gender well that's complicated oh wait no mm Due to things that happen in the anime and the manga, actually, I'm going to have to go with, uh... <sighs> wow, the creator didn't think about this. A uh, member of the op opposite sex. So I, I think, uh, biology, because we have someone who, no, no gender. Gender, because cross-dressing does not equate gender identity. So yeah, so a member of the opposite gender hugs them and they are not part of the cursed family members. What you come out with is uh, they turn into animals and they turn into very specific animals from the Chinese Zodiac. And there's one animal that exists that is not in the Zodiac and that is the cat. And this whole thing revolves around the fable of how the Zodiac came into existence and how the cat is not a part of the Chinese Zodiac, and so he's an outcast. And, of course, uh, the main character, Toru Honda, she hears this story when she is a little child and feels for the cat and decides that she wants to be year of the cat, and it's, it's really cute and adorable. Uh, but the story actually begins <laughs> when, when Toru's in high school. Uh, one of the most notable things about her character is that her mother has passed away a few months prior. Is it a f Yeah, a few months prior to the series beginning. And that, that has a lot to do with um, kind of what I want to talk about today. But the, the series itself uh, kind of goes from there. It's, it's her adventures interacting and meeting all of the different members of the Chinese Zodiac, learning their personalities, learning their likes, their dislikes, their own personal little traumas, because this is a shoujo anime and everybody's got a little trauma. For the most part. No, everybody. But this, this series was actually created twice. You had the, what I'm going to call the original anime, which was back in whew, 2001, I think. And then that anime actually stopped. Um, it got, it, it got that the chopping block that a lot of 90s and 2000s manga to anime series got in that... Uh, when they were creating the anime, they ran out of source material. And unlike Full Metal Alchemist and Fruits Basket's case, they decided, eh, this is a good time to end it. Except they ended that anime, like, not even... Gosh. There are like 20-something volumes, 24, 25 volumes of the manga series, and... They stopped it around volume four, I think? Like, they didn't even get into a lot of the character development that happened in the, in, in the manga. There's a lot of characters that don't even show up yet. Um, and it was... 
the the original anime was precious in its own right. The animation and the art style who did not age well, guys. It didn't. It really, really didn't. I I tried and went back and watched. Uh, I've watched some of the episodes to compare and contrast. Um, yeah, it did not age well, but but uh, in regards to that, um, I will be talking about Fruits Basket up to the episode before the current episode, because I haven't actually watched the current episode yet. Um, I will not be talking about anything that happens in the manga beyond that plot point. So if you have never read the manga and you are just keeping up with the anime series, feel comfortable in knowing that um, it, it, it should be relatively spoiler-free from there. However, if you are a little bit behind on the anime, um, there, there may be some spoilers sprinkled in between like the first season plus of the reboot. Speaking of the reboot, the fact that the first one got kind of the chopping block is the reason that the reboot was able to come into existence. Um, because they stopped the anime so early, and to do so they had to mess around with some of the key elements of specific characters. So it really warped the overall story of the original anime. And it, um, it wasn't good. Uh, the, the creator of the, the manga series, uh, she actually, um, she didn't even let that studio come back. She was like, no, I want all new cast, all new art. Not all new cast. I think a lot of voice actors were able to return. I mean, it wasn't their fault, right, guys? But... So yeah, now you have the Fulminant Alchemist Brotherhood treatment where they have rebooted the anime that is much, 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 much closer to the original manga series. And in doing so, it is almost like night and day for the character Toru Honda. In the first anime, like, okay, in, in both anime, it's important to note that Toru's mother has passed away a few months prior to the beginning. However, comma, um, it's viewed differently since a lot of Toru's character development realistically doesn't start until, well, after the first anime cut off. Um, with the first anime, Toru is represents very Mary Sue-esque character vibes. She often goes into these little speeches that are something that her mom told her, but you've got the, the soft and pretty music in the background, and at the end of her speech, somebody somewhere has learned an important lesson for the episode. And at, honestly, after the initial point of, hey... Her mom's not around. You kind of forget that her mom is dead. Like, she she brings it up every, every once in a while. But for the most part, it's a process of much, much further away than a several months with the original anime. Whereas in the reboot, her character is much deeper. Uh, she actually, since some of the lines were changed around with the reboot, um, she's more human. She doesn't just automatically accept every single bad thing that comes her way. She, she worries about stuff. She has moments of, oh man, why? She actually at one point does say something along the lines of, why is this happening to me? Um... It's not in regards to anything super serious, but it, it does happen. It shows that she is capable of deeper emotions. And it also shows throughout the anime, the new one, that she is grieving. She has her own set of trauma that just doesn't get time to be explored in the original anime. You go into... Like, when, when she talks about her mom in this one, 
it's a lot more of, hey, this is how this character is processing her grief. This is how this character might not be processing her grief in the healthiest way. Um, and that definitely gets explored a, a lot more in season two, which, again, season two of the reboot. Gosh, I think season one of the reboot defeats the uh, the original anime and pacing. Like, that's how incredible, like, and sad it is that it did that. Um... But yes, she definitely goes from a more Mary Sue-esque character, you know, where she's like, hey, you know, everything is the way it is, and I'm just going to magically have everyone fall in love with me, and everyone's going to love me, and there's just really no depth behind it. Like, in the original, she's definitely, like, the one character that doesn't seem to have any emotional issues but thanks to the development and the reboot that they were able to explore, it's relevant that and apparent that she's really... She's struggling just as much as every other character in the series. And I like that. It makes her way more relatable. Uh, maybe it's... But maybe that stuff was in the original anime and I didn't pick up on it because I was 11. And in the original anime, my mom was still alive. She is not currently still alive, so... Um, that might have something to do with how I'm viewing Toru. But I want to say I did pick up on those vibes with the original manga again. So maybe I'm not just, you know, imprinting on this character from, from my childhood. Um, Toru is also more intelligent. Like she takes way less time to get from point A to point B in the reboot. Um, but I think part of that also has to do with the original anime was shown as a kind of like a shoujo rom-com comedy type thing. There's a lot of gags um, and the gags are more pronounced than the overall depth of the story because again, they couldn't explore the story. With the reboot, it's, it's more drama with comedy elements. So they have more time. I've probably mentioned that about 20 times by now. You know, drink every time I say they have more time. Water, hydrate. Hydration's important. However, um, it's definitely more, more drama and good drama. So it's more exploring emotions than it is the dramedy of the first series. And so far, they're even exploring a lot of the underwritten stuff, the context of the manga as well. Every once in a while there's a scene that's like, ooh, that wasn't in the original series, manga series, and it's like, ooh, but it makes sense. This is true to this character, this is true to this character's series, history. Honestly, guys, it's doing a great job. I'm, I'm really excited about this reboot. Uh, I have a friend that I watch watch it with every time there's a new episode. We're like, all right, we've got to go watch Fruit Bats and, you know, quarantine time. So we we sync up the headsets and we do one, two, three, go! So we can watch it together and then we have to, you know, adjust because one of us hit play first. But they're like, yeah, we got to watch Fruit Bats. And I don't remember where I was going with that. Wow, I went off. Oh, yes. Yeah, so every time I'm like, because she hasn't read the original manga and she doesn't remember most of the anime she thinks she's seen some of it but she doesn't um she's coming in brand new to this for the most part and every time I'm like oh my gosh okay so this is gonna be a great episode and I realized I have probably said that for every single episode and that is fantastic I love it 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 um But yeah, I'm really excited to see where they go from here because now they are they are getting into the plot points that are more near and dear to my heart. And I have it has gone past uh, like I said the original anime, so a lot of it's new for me too. And that's really exciting. Um and with that, 
I believe we are out of time for the day. So I will see you guys next week. And uh, have a wonderful time. Did you enjoy the episode? Do you agree with my thoughts on Toru Honda from Fruits Basket? Uh, do you disagree? Did you like the previous anime more or the current anime more? Do you still prefer the manga? Feel free to let me know in the comments below. And if there is anything specific you would like to hear me talk about in the future, also let me know in the comments below so I can check it out. Thank you for spending this time with me and have a wonderful week.